Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name's Gwem, and today I'm going to break down another of my tracks from my last album, which is called Break and Enter on Cheap Beats Tokyo. Um, this song is called Ghosts of Hardcore, and I thought it might be interesting for people because I tried to design it to use the least um, CPU resources of the Atari as I could. And the reason that I did that is so that the song could perhaps be used in a demo at some stage. But let's start by listening um, to the track. Base Base come down Base come down Come down. Come down. Okay, there we are. So I'm going to start by showing you the config panel. So as you can see here, this section, uh, which says the timers, um, only has the D column selected. And that means that only one timer of the Atari is used. Now, the Atari has four timers, A, B, C, and D. And <clears throat> D is already used um, as a regular interrupt to provide like a tempo clock to the track. And the other timers, A, B, and D, are used to, you know, for the special effects. Did or digi drums or sync buzzer. So in this case, this track is only using one of those, which already... Um, will reduce CPU consumption. Um, timer B is um, has special properties on the Atari. It can be used, for example, to break the borders of the screen or for colorful raster effects um, in your demo. So that's generally one that demo coders want you not to use. But anyway, I've not used that one and I've not used timer A either. I've only used timer D. Now, this part here, STE um, DMA, I have it set to NAT, which is native. So it won't do any resampling, which will save CPU. It will only play the drum sounds at certain frequencies that the STE natively supports. Um, you'll see here that the volume column is set to zero and that means that it will only pre-calculate one single volume level of the samples and that is done to conserve memory but let's go back and have a look at this track 
as you can see all four channels are used and that is because there are STE samples as I've said already let's have a listen to um, samples that we have now they um, are clearly pitched far too fast that is again done um, to try and save a bit of memory now normally I make my STE digi drums at um, the fastest rate that the STE can support which is 50 kilohertz but that will use quite a lot more um, CPU sorry that will use quite a lot more memory than samples um, which had been done at a lower rate so I will need to play those back slower. Um, I will do now. A little too slow. Still a little slow. Sample one. Sample two. Three. Sample four. And those breakbeat samples have been taken from uh, one of my favorite rave tunes, which is um, well, it's kind of a drum and bass tune actually. It's called Renegade Snares by Omni Trio. And um, just like with the, the track I covered last time, the reason I cut up the breakbeat is so that I can rearrange it and make a kind of evolving beat pattern. Let's listen to those drums now. There is a little vocal sample in there as well that I forgot to tell you about. That is the last sample. Bass come down. Uh, that is LL Cool J. Bass come down. And he is saying, feel the bass come down on me. But I didn't use the whole um, bass come down section of his voice because um, again that would use quite a lot of memory uh, which I was trying to save in case one day this track might be used in a demo. Bass come down. Um, hence why I've only taken the bass come down. I wanted to use this sample actually because there's a track on the first Prodigy album uh, Experience which uses the same LL Cool J sample and I thought it would be cool to do a little reference. Also I slightly pitched up his voice um, you know, for the kind of rave effect. Let's hear what else is going on. There is a buzzer bass. Channel 2 we have. Square wave bass. And they're doubling each other, so they're playing the same note. And that's one of the things you can do for thickness. Um, because we're only using a single timer, um, we have to do more tricks to kind of get the Atari to sound good. And one of them is um, doubling sounds on, on two channels. That may seem wasteful, and it kind of is. Um, but on this track, I have only used um, STE drums, and I don't have any YM drums. So we sort of have a channel free. Let's listen to the third track. <clears throat> it doesn't sound like much on its own, but if you put all three together, you get bass. You hear the rhythm and the bass and the bleep kind of complement each other. Um, let's have a look at the bleep briefly. That is um, a using a timer. 
that is a SID sound, um, which is just a straight square wave. And furthermore, there is uh, no detuning on that sound. It's just your basic SID effect, if you like. It's just a square wave modulated by another square wave at the same frequency. Um, this is playing arpeggios, which are in E minor. You can see by the X command here. Okay. To the second and then see base base come down that's just um the end of the introduction which leads into the rest of the track So I've kind of gone for dark breakbeat, hardcore, almost drum and bass um, type of effect here. Uh, here are the drums. I like it when it sounds like the drums are flowing and having a conversation. So I use that cut up breakbeat and I spend quite a long time usually on my drums so that they they have a pleasing sort of flow to them. Um, you'll notice that the tempo of this track is 150 BPM rather than um, some other rate. And the reason I chose that is, again, it's kind of a native rate. I thought if this is going to be included in a demo, it will probably be using a 50 hertz uh, replay rate. The reason for that is that it's the same rate as the screen, and a demo coder can use what's called the vertical blank interrupt, which happens every time um, the screen scan starts. And then on top of that, he can insert the replayer of my maximizer um, tracker. But by limiting it to only 50 hertz, you only have a certain speed option. So most tracks you'll find for old games and old demos are running at 125 BPM, which is because there is six 50 hertz interrupts for every single line on the tracker. And in this case, I've gone for <clears throat> five um, 50 hertz interrupts per line on the tracker, which gives a tempo of 150 BPM. If I went for four, it would be 187 BPM, which I felt was too fast. Um, and you can go 250 and, and so on. But 150 BPM is quite nice for that kind of dark side um, breakbeat hardcore going into drum and bass era of of rave music so it, it worked out perfectly actually let's listen to the other so that is a buzzer bass which i'll break down in a second it's being double moved square wave bass at a lower octave, so together you get. Um, so you get the kind of gnarliness of the buzzer combined with a, a deep square wave. And on top of that, there are bleeps. There's a kind of dubstepy sort of technique here. Um, so the first set of bleeps um, have a fake delay of four steps, basically. Uh, and then the second chord has a much faster um, decay. And I got that from listening to kind of early dubstep tunes, which quite often did the same thing with <clears throat> the 
delays on the samples and synths that they use, they wouldn't always use the same delay rate. So I um, hear that by listening. Um, just to sort of copy. Have a look at that buzzer bass. What is it made of? <coughs> Volume set to max. In any case, with a, a buzzer, you don't have control over the volume anyway. Um, so it's a combination of the buzzer with the square wave. And there is um, a little click at the start. Um, so the first two steps of the sound are at a higher octave, which gives you like a um, it makes you aware of the bass note and gives it more definition. <clears throat> Other than that, the square wave and the um, buzzer are a little bit, uh, well, quite a lot detuned. They're seven semitones apart, which um, <clears throat> gives the effect of like a power chord. Um, is also um, seven semitones apart. You have a root note. A note seven semitones above that, and the distortion on your guitar causes the notes to intermodulate, which is exactly what's happening with the square wave and the buzzer. So I can play um, the components of that. That's the square wave. There's the buzzer. Doesn't neither sound very spectacular, but together they intermodulate and sound much more aggressive. And as I've said, that is doubled with a plain square wave, which isn't modulated with anything at all. Continue. Right. <laughs> that step is more of the same, re re to be honest, but... The bass line itself I actually worked out on a bass guitar. Um, I'm trying to become a better bass player. So I'm listening to a lot of um, bass tutorials and the actual notes that I played are inspired by that all except for this little effect there which I you know added that is the same all except for this little lead Now that little lead part is just a um, just a sound to I've called it the riff sound. That is really just a square wave, and it's quite short. And I like sometimes the effect of having a pure square wave. This is chip tune after all, and it it cuts right through the mix. Like that. I used a deliberately weird sounding um, E. And there is a, a pad string sound in the background, which is a detuned um, square wave with a, with a software SID. Um, it's only slightly detuned. I've got two in this fine frequency column. sometimes set myself the task of using um, a weird key for the tracks I write. I watch um, quite avidly um, Rick Beato's um, YouTube channel. I'm sure like most of you have heard of it. It's quite a big channel. Anyway, he delves into different aspects of music and I do find his 
stuff on different modes and key is very interesting. That's uh, one of that. Bass come down. That's the end of that section. I've just muted the bass. You'll notice that the bass is no longer doubled. Uh, that means it won't sound so thick, but it's compensated by having the strings and that lead. Bass. Bass come down. And I've gone a bit mental with the drums in this section. It's kind of a beat down, I suppose. Bass come down. Uh, again, I probably spent ages over that um, little section of beat to try and get it to flow. All the bass is doing is. Kind of a who killed Elvis type of um, aggressive bass line. Um, the reason I've kept the bass quite simple there is because the beat is more complex, so you don't want to have too much crazy. Or at least I didn't at the, the when I wrote. Bass. bass, come down. And we go back into the main beat. And this is an outro for the song. It simply, um, it's more or less the same as the introduction. Um, actually, it is exactly the same as the introduction. I quite liked the Bass. little beat pattern that I came up with there, and I thought it would be a good outro as well. Bass. You see, when you're making like a drum and bass or a breakbeat track, the, if it's quite minimal like this tune is, the beat almost becomes the hook. So I, re I, I do think that it's important to have a very patchy sounding breakbeat, if that's possible. Um, there's a song called um, In Effect by Mike Slammer and um, DJ Red Alert which is um, an old breakbeat hardcore track and it's really a um, if you listen to it it's an absolute masterclass in, a, in how to cut up breakbeats and i do know they made that track using an amiga tracker and i think you can hear it quite well dj zinc wrote a lot of his early material using a tracker as well and it's a, a perfect tool for arranging um for arranging breakbeats and um you do have to spend a lot of time listening and deciding if that's the way you want the breakbeat to evolve or not. Bass. Bass come down. And that's it. A complete explanation of my track Ghosts of Hardcore. I don't know if it will ever be included in the demo, but it has been included in my um, album uh, break and enter as i say i hope that was interesting for you and some of you might have learned something especially around trying to minimize the system resources that your tracks use normally in chip the chip tune scene as opposed to the demo scene you don't really care about how much cpu you use as long as you know you can play the track but if you've got some other crazy demo effects and stuff running in that case you need to be a bit more careful um, about the type of effects you use in your track because that will reduce the cpu available to the coder for doing their crazy effects and demo is about crazy effects i think there is a trade-off between having a cool tune 
and having uh, lots of wild effects. In the old school demo scene, they wanted like zero CPU for the for the music, but I think that's kind of counterproductive. I think that was because the demos were put together by coders, so they kind of favoured the effect. But I'm happy to say that in the kind of more modern demo scene, it is it is more of a blend because the, the music sets a mood for a demo. <clears throat> And you can also show off some cool um, chiptune effects in that as well. So you've got a balance uh, between the resources you use for the music and the, and the demo effect <clears throat> to make the best overall production, I think. I don't think if you watch a demo and you turn the sound off, it, lo it looks crap, basically. Um, so you'll quite often find when you watch um, demo scene prods, particularly for the ST or other tracks that use a sound chip like the Commodore 64 or the, or the ZX Spectrum, the way that they construct their tunes is a little bit different to the way that um, it is done in the chip tune scene. <clears throat> so, you know, have a think about that. Consider subscribing. And um, ask me any questions in the comments and I'll see you next time.